Captain Coder here once again with another Clash of Code. We are going to hop in here. If you're not familiar with Clash of Code, it's a programming challenge that you can do at Code in Game. Once you know the basics, so don't hop in here if you're new to brand brand new to programming. You need to know how to do if statements, loops, variables. Then you can hop in and start doing these coding challenges. Um, anything past that is of course useful, specifically uh, string manipulations. Understanding how to do string manipulations uh, is super important as well. Um, arrays often come up in these, but these are 15 minute coding challenges where you're competing against eight other people. We have a fastest mode, there's three modes. Fastest mode is one where you get a problem statement and you have to come up with a solution as quickly as possible. We're gonna take a little bit of time rather than running through it so I can talk through my process. Um, today we're gonna do one in Java. So we're gonna do it in Java. You can choose the programming language of your choice. I think there's like 20 in here. All of the most popular Java, Python, JavaScript, C Sharp, even got some, some more obscure ones like Haskell. Do they have Haskell? Yeah, there it is. Haskell, Groovy, F Sharp, some of the more obscure ones. But we're going to do Java today. Let me stop rambling. Let's read this question. Your task is to count how often the substring S, all right, so we got a string manipulation one, appears in any word from the string text, ignoring case. All right, so we have to detect a string S in a in, a, in a, another string called text. If S appears two times in one word, it should be counted only once. Test account how often a substring S appears in any word from the substring text. If S appears two times in one word, it should only be count, it should be counted only once. Okay, interesting. So we get two lines of input. So we have an input coming in. Sort of, here's an example. But the the definition of the input is a string S is the first line string that must be looked for in each word and a string text the list of all words separated by a space okay so we're gonna get um the string that we're looking for with no spaces i'm assuming it can't have spaces um and down here we have some constraints that tell us that the length of s is at least one and less than 10 and the length of the text is at least one and less than 256. And we gotta output a single integer value. It's in the number of times this word appeared as a substring in some of those words. If it appears multiple times in a in a single word, it we're we're gonna we're only gonna count it once. Alright. So we are going to have to loop through all of this individual words in text. Alright, so it gives you a little starter code here. And then in each one of those, we're going to check if it contains a case insensitive version of the input string, right? Ignoring case. Okay. So the question is, how do we take our text, break it into chunks? I, I often call what, what, what would you call these? Um, I had the word on the tip of my tongue a second ago, tokens. Sometimes you'd, you'd call it tokens. You're like, well, every, every space is a token. Or, or every word between each space is a token. So let's let's do that. Turns out, I believe, yep, there it is. There is a method attached to string split. I'm gonna take this and let's look at the type. It's gonna return an array of strings. All right, splits this string around, splits this string around matches of the given regular expression. So in this case, we're gonna say a single space they might have said white space or something you do some if you know regular expressions and then this method works as if by invoking the two argument split method with the given expression and a limit argument of zero all right so we're going to split on spaces to get all of our strings i'm going to call these tokens you can call it words whatever you whatever you want and then we're going to loop through all of them we're going to do a traditional for loop and then we'll do it again with an enhanced for loop often called the for each loop for int i equals zero i is less than tokens dot and we're dealing with an array so length is a property not to be confused with strings length method which would have parentheses at the end and then i plus plus oh doing doing c style uh there for a second In java we like our curly braces at the end 
in C, C++, and C sharp, I believe we like our curly braces on the next line. I've been doing a lot of C sharp. Let's not get distracted. We, we, we don't have a lot of time, 10 minutes. All right. Now we got to check if our S is a substring within text. All right, so, so there's a couple ways we could do this. If we know the API for string, we go, so let, first, first, let's pull out tokens. Token equals tokens of I. So this is a single word that we're gonna be looking at. And if we, if we know our API, we can do token dot find or index of. Hmm, Let, let's look it up real quick. Java string API. Got a couple different ones. I'm gonna try 11, it's a little bit newer. All right, I think there's an index of string. Returns the index within the string of the first occurrence of the specified substring. So if you know your API, we can do this relatively easy. So we're gonna go dot index of, and then our substring is S, all right. This is gonna tell us the index of, and if we read that documentation one more time, it tells us the return index is the smallest value k. If no such value of k exists, negative one was returned. So if, if this is negative one, that means we didn't find it. Otherwise, otherwise we need to increase a count. So this is an aggregate function, not function, aggregating loop. It's a loop that goes through and it's building up things. So we're gonna do a count. Our count's gonna start at zero. And then we have to write an if statement here that says, okay, well, if ix is greater than negative one, all right, so if we found a copy, let's increase our count. Count plus plus, you can do count equals count plus one, or count plus equals one. Doesn't matter too much. I think technically count plus plus might be, um, I think there's some weird thing where count plus plus could be faster in some situations. I don't think it matters. Anyway, count plus plus. All right, so then at the end of the day, we're gonna put our account here. And and this isn't done yet. I have a, I have a, a logical issue here. Um, while I'm running these tests, see if you can see if you can figure out what it is. So I got my, my test one done, easy done, substring and word done, upper and lower. Ooh, that's a good that this test is named really well. This test is named really well. It's it's failing. We don't know what the inputs and outputs are, but let's print them out real quick to see what they are. System dot out dot print. Uh, wait, wait, we should do system dot error. Print on. So on um, this is a little weird system to error to print on. On code in game, if you use the error uh, stream instead of system dot out, if you use system dot error, it outputs the error string, the error output, and doesn't get counted towards your answer. So you can have some like print line debugging in here. I don't think they have like a full debugger. So this is essentially what you're stuck with. But we're gonna do s, so we know what our first line was, and then we can also know, and and you probably already know what the answer is here. Um, but I want to see, sometimes you're, you, if you're on a coding game puzzle, you're going like, well, what, what is my inputs and outputs? I don't see them here. I can't see them anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and do this thing. Try again. Ah, so I have rage, all caps. And I have rage, raging, and the rage here. And so what's happening is I forgot about case insensitivity. Okay. So there's, we, we want to this to work for case insensitive things. So we're gonna convert this to uh, two, what is it, two lower case? Is that not? Okay, it did. It wasn't showing up in my autocomplete that two lower case. So if we make these both lower case, it suddenly is gonna ignore that. Let's try it again. Play all of our test cases. Sip some 
delicious coffee while that's while that's going through. Okay, so we have a solution here. We have five minutes left. We're using a traditional for loop, which is fine and dandy and happy if that's how you went ahead and did it. But in a case where you just need to check every value in some, some sort of collection, it is often better, more concise, less, less ways to make mistakes if you use a for each loop. So check it out. Th these two lines, these two lines are essentially what is happening when you do almost what's happening when you do string token colon tokens. Oh, sorry, there's no for each in, in Java. That's a C sharp thing. Instead, so you do four and you say string token in token. So check it out. A traditional for loop where you are just iterating and pulling out the values and doing something with that value, you can replace it with an enhanced for loop like this. And it is essentially the same. But now you don't have to worry about managing your indices. No mistakes can be made on your indices. You don't have to worry about is it dot length parentheses dot length the field or dot size if you're dealing with with an array list or a list or a collection so the for the enhanced for loop i always call it a for each loop it's essentially a for each loop in most languages uh the enhanced for loop looks like this all right we'll play them all again just to verify that this works identically the one thing is sometimes you need to modify the contents of your array during a loop. Can't do this here. Can't modify the content. So I couldn't change the value that's in the index. Um, okay. And let, let's keep simplifying is the wrong word. I actually like this solution a bit, but uh, there are some simplifications we can make. Notice I'm calling lo to lowercase each time through this loop. We know we don't care about it ahead, so I could do a minor optimization here where I say, well, I'm gonna make the lowercase right when I read it in. And then I don't, since I don't need the original string, I can get rid of it. I could do that. All right, got three minutes left. Let's keep, let's keep ticking through it a little bit, showing minor things we could do. Okay, so I did that. Splitting, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna undo my split. I'm not gonna show the hard way where you could write your own index of type of thing. But if you really, really wanted to, you could notice this IX is only used in one spot. You could put it in there. So essentially what, what's happening when you run this code, anytime you have a variable, it sort of substitutes whatever value is stored in there. So we're using this once, just pop that bad boy in there. That bad boy, is this really, <laughs> this line of code, this, this function call, this method call, is that really a bad boy? I don't know why I said that. What's wrong with me? Okay, so now we have this little tight loop here. And then if you're crazy, all right, so fun fact, don't ever do this in, in my class, maybe on an APA test or something. I know on the AP exam, they love to do this and I hate it. But since I have a single line inside each one of these, so everything between the curly braces, that's called your body, the body of the for loop, the body of the if statement. If you have a single statement inside, you can you can omit the parentheses like a like a like a crazy person. All right, there's a single statement inside of each one. You can omit omit them. Don't ever really do this. All right, we're gonna do one more crazy thing. I'm gonna show you. Don't again. Don't do this. This makes your code hard to read. But you could also do if you wanna if you wanna flex on your friends a little bit. You can say well, I'm gonna do my count plus equals to, and then you're gonna say. This is your ternary operator. We're gonna say in the case that this is true, we're gonna increase by one, otherwise we're gonna increase by zero. Okay. And we should still pass. So ternary operator is a Boolean expression on the left, question mark, and then a value uh, that you want when it's true and a value you want when it's false. So fun, 
fun little thing there to know if you hadn't seen that before now you have good to know and if this was a question on an exam you can save yourself a little bit of space i prefer the version with the if statement a little bit save us uh some headache of trying to understand your brain doesn't always see this and understand right all right 30 seconds better hit that submit button and as always with Clash of Code, with anything on Coding Game, I love to share my code so other people can see it and learn from it. So not everyone was able to do this one. This one looked like it might've actually been hard for some people. So they could come back. So after the, the, after the 15 minutes expires, you get a little message saying what place you got. And you can come and you can look at other people's code who decided to submit it. Unfortunately, not a lot of people did. Um, so I'm glad I did. I thought this one was pretty fun. Go perfect difficulty for these. Not too hard, not too 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 easy. The statement was pretty clear. There was, um, yeah, there was. It said everything was. I think it was. It was fine. I'm gonna say there was like maybe some some improvement to be possible. But it was very clear. And the test cases were great. They had good naming to the test cases. One just test one, test two, test three. I actually said what the, it was testing, and it it helped catch some bug for me. All right, we're gonna submit that. Real quick, we'll look at the Python solution this person came up with. In Python, same thing, they say first, I'm gonna convert these to lower, since I need to be case and seven. I hate their variable name X here. It's not very descriptive, but in, in, in the code that I wrote, it would have been count. They're looping through each uh, index, interesting. Input. Oh, they're split. Okay, they split it first up here. They split it first up here. Ah, uh, that, that's that's a way to do it because they know that they're not going to need the original text anyway. And this I this is this is interesting. I is still an index, and then if s is in that string. All right. So they're looping through each string in their chunks of text. If s is in it, kind of nice that you you can do that in Python plus equals one. So increase it by one and then they print out their solution. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something and I hope you have a beautiful day. See you next time.